Uh, the mounting location matters to a large extent because you really have to think about it. I always, whenever I'm lighting a camera, I always think about it from the perspective of the camera. You know, if I'm if I'm sort of like you know, kind of tilted like this, I sort of imagine well, if I'm the camera and I'm sort of moving this way and uh, I'm hitting the camera, I'm hitting the finish line, the top of me first, then I need to swivel this way. So same kind of thing with with light. If I'm the camera, I want to be in the path of reflected light. Right? To the extent I can be, I want to be in the path of reflected light. I do not want to be in the path of incident light. Okay. Um, so what that means is just basically, to the extent possible, don't shoot into the light. Um, as I discussed earlier, where possible, take advantage of the wide zoom modes because you do get you basically the way the the way the light advantage of the wide zoom modes you know becomes in evidence is that you can effectively use higher gain numbers and get less noise in the image if you're in a zoom mode, right? So if then if you're in a wide zoom, mode. so if you if you take a you know if you're taking a picture at zoom 100 percent and you're Game 100 or something like that to make the, math, the numbers easy. In theory, you should be if you go to zoom 50%, you should be able to push the gain up somewhat and retain the same noise level that you had at, at, at a game 100 before. Because basically, again, the way to think about it is that your pixels are, are bigger. You're, you're you're pulling in more data off of the off of the sensor in those zoom modes, and so you should be able to bump the the gain up. Now. The important thing about that is that what you don't want to do is sacrifice f-stop for that. And what I mean by that is, if you can if you can get that wide zoom mode, if you can put it in zoom 50% for free, okay. In effect, using if you're using a zoom uh, an f1.4 lens and you can use zoom 50% and still use an f1.4 lens, then definitely do it. If you have to give up an f-stop to do it. So like, if in order to use, you know, let's say you have a 50 millimeter f1.4 and a 100 millimeter um, f2. And so, you say, well, if I, if I ran in zoom 50% mode with my 100 millimeter lens, you know, I, I, maybe I'll get a better picture. But the, the, the positive effect of that zoom mode is not as big as the negative effect of losing that one f stop. Okay, an f stop is two times, you know, two times less light or more light depending on which direction you go. Okay, so when you move from an f1.4 to an f2 lens or an f2 to an f2.8, every time you do that, you're losing, you know, half your light. The gain of going from zoom 100% to zoom 50% is not double. So you only want to do it when it comes from free. You don't want to do it when it costs you an f to do it. Um, take the time to white balance. This helps. It's not so much a light issue as much as it's a quality issue, a quality issue, an uh, image issue. But it also does help. It helps the AGC algorithm. It helps the, the, the thing in the camera that's automatically adjusting the light if the picture looks like reality and not, you know, wildly out of, out of color balance. And I don't know if anyone's, I don't know how good the instructions are, to be honest, on white balance. Um, but the important thing that I always tell people about white balance is when you do a white balance, you don't want the thing that you're selecting on the image to be white already. <laughs> okay. Which is the most common thing that happens. People. Most people are doing white balance on image on image that uh, is AGC or AGC already, right? So they turn on AGC, the camera is you know automatically adjusting it so that the, the picture has some white in it, right? Because this is what the camera is trying to do. It's saying, oh well, yeah, I got to turn something white, okay? So given enough gain, the camera will turn something that isn't white white, okay? And then what people will do is they'll they'll turn on the AGC. Part of the image will go white, they'll select that white part, you know, 
software is going to say, well, that's white already, so I'm not going to do anything. The way to do white balance is put your camera in manual gain, okay, and reduce the manual gain until the thing that is white in your field of view has some color in it. Okay. Not a lot, you don't want it to be like, you know, so dark that it's black, but, you know, manual gain, reduce it until there's some shade of some color, then select that. Do a white balance, turn your APC back on. Okay. The point is that the thing, the, the, the software, in order to do a white balance, you know, needs to be working with some image, some section of image that has, you know, some color in it. Unless your image is already perfectly white balanced, in which case it won't do anything, which is what it's um, Don't be afraid to use the filter. I don't know, but again, I don't know how, how good the instructions are on this either, but, uh, you know, your camera has a little filter in the front here. And it says, in the modern cameras, later cameras, it says high, normal, and low, okay? <clears throat> normal has what's called a, an IR filter, an infrared filter in front of it. Okay? What that does is it, it makes the colors punchy, okay? But what it also does is it steals a little bit of, uh, of, of uh, light from either end of the color filter. So, in the normal case, when you have enough light, you know, you're living in normal, you get nice, punchy colors, everything's great. Um, there are some situations in if you have a lot of light and you're not running particularly fast, where you actually have to put it on high light because, you know, you actually need to get, you're actually overexposing. But the more common situation is, particularly if you're doing indoor meetings or something, is you don't have enough light. Um, in that case, the, the first priority is always to get race is properly timed and to be able to decide who's in front of who, okay? And so in that case, you put the thing on low, what it's doing is it's, it's pulling that, that infrared filter out from behind the lens and letting in basically all the light, regardless of whether it's in infrared or ultraviolet. Okay? And that just, you know, that will give you a surprising amount more um, uh, light. It just will make the colors less, it'll be, the colors will be muted. 